Hello dear friends, this reflection is the result of the life lessons I have learned. Opinion piece. Confronted influencers. Divide and conquer. Few and mismatched. It's not a matter of egos. Batting of ways. What you resist persists. It's a question of identity. Together but not mixed up. Plague of confrontations. We have different missions. I have never criticized another YouTuber. Everyone wants you to join their cult. Everyone wants you to visit them or visit us. Other, others just want to be left alone. They don't understand independent collaboration. CCP suppresses those who seek enlightenment. Ice cube in Antarctica for mind control. Open hearings on UFOs for first time in 50 years. Were ancient Martians massacred by atomic bombs? They are trying to distract people from the incredible future that awaits us. Keys to humankind are hidden in Tibet, Egypt and Transylvania. The dark side's end game is to prevent us from manifesting a positive future. Let's start. You can count on the fingers of one hand and there are more than enough fingers, the times in my life that I have fought and broken with someone, although more than one has offended when I politely asked him or her to leave me alone. This is logical in a crystal-born peacemaker being who avoids confrontation and lets time do justice to each one, because his mission is to lead peace, not to provoke divisions. We can all suggest kindly, but we cannot take another being out of his way. Crystal children, known as peacemakers, are lovers of animals, plants and the nature in general. They have gifts, gifts of telepathy, read minds and pick up on people's energy with ease. Crystal children understand spirituality and develop self-healing abilities with ease. They are incredibly sensitive to know people's hearts, so they don't fit into the so-called normal. In quotes. Others of us have developed the ability to adapt to the system without being affected too much, to swim and keep our clothes, to be in the world without being of the world. But being here is very stressful regardless. I have never publicly criticized another YouTuber or another channel, even if I do not agree with what they say because everyone has the right to say what they deem appropriate and convenient, and I am no one to set myself as, up as a judge of anyone. But I am constantly criticized and even plagiarized. Everyone has his own style, and does the best he can to help people, although sometimes he is wrong and sometimes he is right or she. Another issue would be the case of the one who was bribed to get into trouble. However, lately I have suffered two breakups that have given me a lot to think about. It has been something unusual in my life that has taught me a great lesson. A breakup occurs when affinity, reality and communication fail. Any of these three elements is enough to produce a rupture, which is quite easy because we live different realities in our path, although the goal of all beings is to seek happiness and avoid suffering. Definition An influencer is a living being who has become famous through the internet. It means influencer, one who influences people. These personalities are characterized by having a community of followers in the main social networks who are interested in the content of their messages. 
A streamer, also called live broadcaster, is a person who broadcasts live or live or delayed broadcasts. Millions of people write online magazines or blogs, but it, if the author has or develop or develops a distinctive or charismatic personality, he or she can become famous. As a result of the popularity of these celebrities, many companies, in order to reach a wider audience, have begun to hire them to promote their brand's products. Cyber activism. Cyber activism, virtual activism, or online activism is a cyber culture phenomenon and refers to the form of social action and participation through which citizens may make use of technology and the internet to organize activities, discuss, share information, participate, and express their discontent on issues with which they identify. Tax are used to represent protest campaigns such as Game Over and to confront social injustice. Influence YouTubers are the new generation of creators who publish audiovisual content on the internet. They are not singers or social players, nor they appear on, tele on a television channel, but they are the stars of the moment. YouTubers, also known as video bloggers, are not part of a company or organization. They are citizens who use their own channel to create content of interest to their audience. YouTube's influence is even greater than that of television, especially in some categories such as cosmetic products or digital technology. A YouTuber is a producer and manager of audiovisual content that uses YouTube as its communication platform. According to multiple studies, YouTubers have become an important source of information and entertainment for the millennial generation. Places like Facebook, Twitter or Instagram are stronger than ever and their power is unquestionable. Instagram is currently the social network with the most influence on, on teenagers above Facebook, Twitter and YouTube, as it has more than 1,386 million active users every month. It has gone from being a simple platform for sharing images with friends and family to a space where users go to promote their image and find reaffirmation from others. Twitter allows limited publications of 280 characters and therefore it is a concise and direct way of transmitting information. Because of its simplicity and speed, many brands rely on this social network to promote their products. Plague of confrontations. It seems that there is a plague of confrontations among the disseminators who work for the good of humankind. I fulfill my life mission like many others, which in this case matches my profession, but I have been criticized for living from my job like everyone else, when I earn less per hour than a respectable domestic worker. How many YouTubers are licensed and registered professional journalists? We are few and far between. This plague of clashes on the internet can have many explanations. Some say it is a matter of egos and cockfights. Others say that we have a mental implant of confrontation and division. Others say that we are inspired by demons to fight among us in order to divide and split the awakening mob movement, applying the maximum divide and conquer. But my personal opinion is very different without excluding other interpretations. It's simply that each one lives his own particular reality because he, he or she has a different life project and a different life mission, which, make it, which makes it very difficult for him to understand other realities, other projects and other different life missions. The problem is 
when a being believes himself to be in possession of the absolute truth and tries to make others wrong. Many young people who have been quiet before are now preparing to develop humanitarian projects when the redemption comes. On the contrary, many of us who have been pioneers and have given our faces in disclosure are preparing to retire and rest because we are stressed. This is a relay of generations. There are those whose life mission is to perform humanitarian activities, and there are others whose life mission is to achieve enlightenment for the benefit of all beings, having rendered a service to humankind. All missions are important, but not two are alike, and not two are superior or to each other, just as each being is different and original, unique in the universe. Divide and conquer. In politics and psychology, divide and conquer, or divide to rule, is to gain and maintain power by breaking into pieces of larger unions, which have less energy at the individual level. The concept refers to a strategy that breaks up existing power structures and prevents the linking of smaller power groups. The Latin maxims divide et impera, or divide and rule, and rule they were used by Julius Caesar and Napoleon. In politics and sociology, it is used to define a strategy aimed at keeping territory and the population under control, dividing and fragmenting the power of the different factions or groups existing there, in such a way that they cannot come together in pursuit of a common goal. To avoid unions and understandings, the central power tends to divide and create dissension and distress among different factions in order to reduce the possibility of union and understanding against them. The typical characteristic of this technique, therefore, is to create or fool disputes and controversies between the original factions. Another characteristic that can be used is to subsidize any and support any tendency that is faithful to this rule since one way of taking away autonomy is to create dependence. Its ethics are very dubious. The problem. The problem is that each one considers his reality and his mission as if it were an absolute truth and not relative. So he becomes incapable of seeing the missions and realities of, of other companions on the road, which are very different from his own. They think they are more important than others and do not realize that we are all important in this work. Sometimes they even speak to you from a position of unacceptable superiority. The problem is that the independence of each being is not respected and each one wants to take you to their particular sect so that you will agree with their millstone. Everyone wants you to you to visit them or us, to work for them or to associate with them. But I always say the famous phrase, together but not mix up, or each one in his own house and God in everyone's house. I do not intend to visit or be visited by anyone, but only to be left alone. It is not a chance that destiny has placed our all, placed our all in different places of the planet, in very different countries and societies, because that is what corresponds to our mission in life. They say that one is not a prophet in one's own land, but that is precisely why we must work from our cultural roots and not to get into someone else's house. Each one must find his own audience to fulfill his mission but in no case would it be ethical to try to rise at the cost of crushing others or interfere in the mission of each one. That would be more on the, of the same and very far from the, spirit, from the spirit of autonomous and independent collaboration that would be proper of the new earth, 
without the need to make this a war or a competition for pure envy. The new world will be made up of supportive, autonomous and independent beings. Gestalt prayer by Fritz Perls In quotes, I am me, you are you. I am not in this world to fulfill your expectations. You are not in this world to meet mine. If at, a, if, if at some point we meet, it will be wonderful. If not, it cannot be helped. Lacking love for myself when I try to please you. I betray myself. I lack, I lack love for you when I try to make you as I want to be, as I want you to be, instead of accepting you as you really are. You are you and I am me. Materialism. First, the CCP represses a spirituality. The Asian cultures of China and Japan have much to offer in terms of spiritual knowledge, natural healing, martial art, and the intricate connection between mind, body, and soul. But that is forbidden in China. The CCP doesn't want anyone to pursue any kind of spiritual enlightenment or improvement in mind and body. To them, humankind is just a billion dollar commodity. They also torture and kill animals. It would be the materialism taken to the ultimate extreme. Second, generalized materialism by poet talk. What generalized materialism means is that we are attracted by the pressure force of the collective mind. Perhaps the best solution is to become aware of all states, labels and bodies meaning the same thing, and to be perfectly integrated yet completely detached. This means that you can go into any of the labels and bodies and function fully there and come out again. If you could, you could also get out of a body completely, as if you were taking off your clothes of whatever reason. This is the true meaning of liberation, the ability to externalize the soul like the saints. Watch. First, ex-intelligence chief wants the bank accounts would be frozen to combat alleged disinformation in quotes. Second, freedom in the West has been thrown into the dusting of history, not by the conquerors, but by the West itself. Third, predictive technology puts a touchet on your back. All it takes is an artificial intelligence bot flagging a home for potential neglect or for a family to be investigated, found guilty and children placed in hospice. The government's solution to a problem is usually as bad as the problem and very often makes the problem worse. Trudeau. Trudeau wants to eliminate the poor. The Canadian government has come up with a new solution to solve inflation, homelessness, skyrocketing crime, and food shortages, euthanasia for the poor. The Trudeau regime says it is now offering to pay to euthanize people who are, in quotes, too poor to continue living with dignity. Ufology. First, Congress announces open hearings on UFOs for the first time in 50 years. On May 10th, the New York Times reported that the House Subcommittee will hold open hearings on the subject of unidentified aerial vehicles. These hearings, which take place today, Tuesday the 17th, will be the first open hearings on the subject since Project Blue Book in the 70s. Second, where ancient Martians massacred by atomic bombs, a physicist says he can scientifically prove that two Martian civilizations were wiped out by nuclear explosions. As far as we know, Mars is a desolate looking desert with no apparent life. There are hundreds of building ruins in some of the NASA panoramic images. I would say that Mars has was bombed, and those who did it are here on our planet, in, in, incarnated on our planet, tr 
trying to do it again. History is repeating itself. Third, the Antarctic ice cube, according to Dr. Michael Sala, beginning in October 2010, Eric Hecker spent a year working at the uh, Moots Scott Station at the South Pole for Raytheon Polar Services Company, where he maintained scientific equipment, including a huge neutrino detector called the Ice Cube. He learned that the cube did much more than passively record neutrinos passing through the Earth, but acted as a giant transmitter. Its size and power suggested that it could be used for deep space communication with the sp spacecraft traveling throughout our solar system and beyond. Eric described how the ice cube could be used for weather modifications and might control. Fourth, the storm is upon us according to Dr. Michael Sala. The dark side is playing its biggest cards in a last dis disparate bid to distract people from the incredibly future that awaits us. Food shortages, rising gas and energy prices, baby food disappearing from store shelves, waves of the new immigrants, a new crisis as our solar system enters a region of the galaxy that strengthens our innate genetic capacity to manifest our highest desires or deepest fears through our attention. Where tension goes, energy flows. The dark side's end game is to prevent us from manifesting a positive future and to distract us from the benevolent visitors who have recently arrived in our solar system to help bring about the Great Awakening, which is our destiny. Many of the visitors are planter races who played a pivotal role in the establishment of civilization on Earth going back into ancient history. They are here to reveal ancient wisdom and technologies that have been hidden in the halls of record for thousands of years waiting for humankind to prepare. They are also the civilizations of the inner earth, survivors of the great of great historical cataclysms that have been waiting for us to openly reveal themselves and share their incredible wisdom and technology. Romanian space-time portal to Tibet and Egyptian Hall of Records by Michael Sala. This is number five. Legendary Montauk project researcher Peter Moon discusses a space-time portal from Romania to Tibet and the secret tunnel to the Egyptian Hall of Records described respectively in books two and three of the Transylvania book series. The popular series contained the revelations of Romanian informant Radu Thinamar, who works for the Department Zero, a paranormal investigation division of the Romanian Intelligence Service. In book two, Peter Moon discusses various efforts to corroborate Sinamar's information through the Romanian media and why Sinamar was recruited into the paranormal division of Department Zero after being taken to Tibet through a space-time portal located in Romania's Apuseni Mountains. After his encounters with the, an alchemist named Elinor, woman, woman alchemist, who got prolonged life through a mysterious geometric device, Cinema meets a Tibetan Lama who guides him through the portal to meet Dakini Machandi in Tibet. Upon his return to Romania, Cinema is formally recruited into Department Zero because of his new contacts and experiences. Upon his arrival in Transylvania in 2013, Peter Moon is informed that the white bat has just unexpectedly appears in a cave sacred to the blue goddess Machandi, a tantric Takini who gave Radus Sinamar a therma or hidden treasure in Tibetan tradition. This therma has unleashed a series of apocalyptic events revealing that there are ancient artifacts and mile-long tunnels of pure gold beneath Sarmi 
C. Getusa, the ancient capital of Transylvania, that holds the keys to the fate of humankind, all of which has caught the attention of the world's political and military elite. In Book 3, The Mystery of Egypt, Sinamar travels from an ancient hall of records found within the Buthegi Mountains of Romania to a similar structure in Egypt beneath the pyramid complex of Giza. The Egyptian Hall of Records contains tens of thousands of metal discs with holographic information stored on them, as well as a time machine also known as a chronovisor, used, used to view past and future events along with a levitation platform used for aerial travel. And that's all for today. Thanks a lot, dear friends.